You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. This will be me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Fueled by Insanity, Darren's Path. So we were just at the theater getting ready to watch a movie with everybody, so let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chen, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, could be fun. You okay with that, Jeffrey? No. Uh, sure. Huh, why can't I just say no? I let out a small sigh and closed my eyes, frustrated with how my own mind is working right now. Normally I'd be fine with the movies, but right now I'm not feeling very social. I don't want to say no to their offer, however, because I don't want to disappoint them. I also don't want to deal with Darren lecturing me about why I should get out more. It's a dumb situation to be in. Agreeing to go to the movies again this weekend is giving me anxiety, but turning the offer down would also give me anxiety. At least Saturday's still a few days away. Maybe I'll be in a better mood then. The others continue talking amongst themselves, though I tune it out. Right now, I've got more important things on my mind, such as... Why the hell is this popcorn so good? Sean laughs upon hearing my comment. That's probably because you didn't pay for it. I finished my next mouthful of popcorn before responding. I mean, you're not wrong there, but... So, of course I'm not wrong. I know you too well. Yeah, but... Don't forget to thank him for buying it for you. I already did. Prove it. Prove it? Oh, uh, what? Prove that you thanked him. Uh, how am I supposed to prove that I thanked him? You tell me. I'm starting to get frustrated with Darren for hounding me about this when I don't even know what he's expecting me to do. But then I hear him laugh. Relax, I'm just messing with you. Sorry, it was a bad joke. Hmm. I feel embarrassed for actually getting mad when he was just messing around, but it can be hard to tell with him sometimes. So to deal with my embarrassment, I do the reasonable thing and toss a piece of popcorn at his muzzle. Hey, what was that for? Nothing. Hmm? No. Hmm? What happened? I missed it. He threw popcorn at me. Yeah, that, it's a present. You, can, you can't say I never give you anything. I stick my tongue out at him when, when suddenly I notice him smirk. What's that smirk for? Suddenly I feel something light hit the back of my head. Did Sean just... I turn around to face Sean, only to see him pointing frantically at Tracy. Meanwhile, Darren's trying to hold himself back from laughing. Sean, why? It wasn't me, it was Tracy. Nuh-uh, I'm just sitting over here minding my own business and you reached into my bag of popcorn and threw it. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You both should have done it. You're just saying that because I got you first. Of course. I grab another piece of popcorn and turn back towards Darren, fully aware of the not-so-subtle smirk on my face. I hold the piece of popcorn up as if I'm about to throw it at him, hoping for him to react in some way, but he doesn't. He just stares at the popcorn as if he's focusing on the intent of catching it in his mouth. Well, if he's going to play it that way... Defying his expectation, I said toss the popcorn the other way, looking out. Without looking at where I'm tossing it, hoping to hit Sean. Apparently it does, because I hear another laugh from my half-brother. I turn towards Sean to see his ears standing up, seemingly appalled that I would dare throw something at him. Don't give me that look, you threw something at me first! I just got you back. I told you I didn't throw it. Yeah, that was Tracy. I looked past Sean and noticed Tracy covering her mouth with her hand, trying to hide her laughter. Oh, you sneaky devil! Come on, I had to. Before I get a chance to get my revenge, the lights dim, and so we all turn our attention to the screen as we wait for the movie to start. Heh, I think I'm in a better mood after that. Oh, cool. Oh, I like the posters. Nice. Oh, I know what this one is. I know what this one is. It's my favorite. <laughs> is that the smoke room? That might be the smoke room. Hmm. I wonder what this one is. That one's Ico. That looks like Echo. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that one's the smoke room. Hmm. After the movie and Sean and Tracy stay inside to take a look out took a look around at the other movies that are out. Despite feeling anxious about it earlier, watching Wishing Star has made me feel excited to come back and watch another later this week. That movie was so good. I can't believe they all survived. I never th I never thought for sure when Kesley got lost. I thought for sure when Kesley got lost I'd never see her again. It was still stupid for her to go off on her own. I mean, I completely get why she did it. If everyone went together, they could have all got lost. It also would have slowed her down if, you, if they had to focus on keeping everyone together. At least with it being just her, she didn't have to worry about how everyone else was doing. Yeah, well, I still think it's stupid to split off like that. They should have brought their reserves with them. Anyway, it would have been much safer and they could have waited it out instead. Yeah, well, it worked out, didn't it? Yeah, but I still think they should have been more careful. They brought a mountain and a blizzard. I don't blame her for doing what she thought was best. If that was if that was us up there, I would have done the same. 
If that was you, if that was us up there, you wouldn't need to because we would figure things out together instead of having people go off on their own. Okay, but that would make a boring movie. We aren't trying to make a movie. You really know how to kill the hype, don't you? Darren says nothing at first, worrying me that maybe I shouldn't have said anything. To my surprise, however, he does something I have not seen him do uh, ever. Darren sticks his tongue out at me, and suddenly my train of thought goes completely out the window. What's wrong? Why'd you go quiet? I can't help but laugh at how goofy he looked with his tongue out. He's always so deadpan and hard to read, so seeing him act silly like this is a welcome surprise. I don't think I've ever seen you do that before. What? Stick my tongue out? Yeah. Yeah, well, you caught me in a good mood today. Ah, so you did like the movie. Here, I, here, I thought you did it. I thought you didn't because of how you were talking about it. It wasn't bad. It's nice to get out from time to time. Can't remember the last time we've hung out together. What do you mean? We hung out in your room and played games a few days ago. Not what I mean. I mean getting out and about like this. I stay home too much, trying to break the habit. Come to think of it, he never has been someone to leave the house that much. Maybe this was a good experience for him. To be honest, I didn't want to come at first. You know, plans kept changing and I got really nervous and stuff, and I don't know why. But it was fun hanging out. Thanks for getting me out of the house, too. And then the world went dark. And chaos filled the land. I don't know. I'm being silly. After we got home, I head to my room, needing some time to recharge after socializing. By the time night rolls around, I don't feel tired enough to go to sleep. Even though today was fun, I can't take my mind off the idea that I'm somehow doing things wrong. I'm doing things to make myself happy in the moment while trying to ignore that things could crumble down any second. That's what I've always done, but it's never helped in the long run. Then again, Kajuro hasn't exactly told me what I should be doing, so maybe it's okay? It has to be better than shutting myself off again, right? <sighs> I don't know what's wrong and ro I don't know what's right and wrong because nobody will tell me. Then again, I guess nobody can if I don't communicate, but that wouldn't be a that would be a bad idea. I huff, frustrated that I can't get to sleep or even decide if I want to. Sleep means dream. Dream means Kajoro. Kajoro means dealing with old things I've tried to forget. I used to love sleeping, so I didn't have to deal with reality. Now sleep is the one thing that forces me to face it. Is everything okay? I look over at Ted, who's currently sitting in the chair in the corner with an open book in his hand. I almost forgot he was here since he's been so quiet. Yeah, just stuck in my own head right now. Anything you want to talk about? That I want to talk about? I guess. That I can talk about? No. Ted keeps his eyes fixed on me, I guess trying to work out what I mean. I worry that I may have said more than I should have, so I tried to change the subject. Back when my mom was around, I used to walk, talk to her every night about how my day went. It was a way to organize my thoughts. She was always able to tell me if I was doing things right or wrong. I guess she was sort of my moral compass in a way. She always knew. I miss those nights. Ted puts a bookmark in his book before closing it and sets it on the shelf. I never did get close to my parents. They were there, sure, but they were usually busy with work and stuff. They also never really saw eye to eye. Sorry to hear that. It's fine, though, because I learned to decide things for myself. It didn't matter if they agreed because they weren't me. But what if you end up doing the wrong thing? What if people hate you because you did something they didn't want you to do? Then too bad for them. As long as I, as long as I do what I think is right. His eyes wander away from me as he trails off. You okay? Almost immediately, he goes back to his usual chipper smile. Oh, yeah. Sorry, my mind sort of wandered off there for a second. I think getting to hang out with your friends is starting to make me nostalgic. But it's okay, because I'm happy where I am now. Well, you should be, because I'm here. I earned a laugh from Ted in response to my sudden outward positivity. You're a goofball. Of course. I stretch out along the bed and yawn, feeling much more relaxed than I was earlier. Ted yawns as well and then walks over. Do you mind scooting over so I can lay down too? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes you mind? I'm comfy, I don't want to move. Okay, but where am I supposed to sleep then? Yes. I giggle at my own shenanigans, feeling silly all of a sudden. Maybe it's because I'm tired, but Ted is fun to mess with. Yes, what? Yes, you can sleep. Ted's eyes shift from me to the rest of the bed that I'm taking up, and then back to me. Fine, I'll just go to sleep in the chair then, meanie. Oh, come on, you're no fun. I'll scoot over for you. I slide over, making some room for Ted. As fun as it would be to mess with him some more, mess with him some more, maybe it should wait for another day when he isn't so tired. Of course, the second I give in, Ted springs back into his happy self. So that, so, that works. <laughs> maybe I should call you mean more often. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I glare at Ted as he gets in bed, well, I'm hoping he'll notice. 
Having a good time at the movies earlier has put me in a happy, silly mood. Once Ted's comfortably in bed, he rolls over to face me, and that's when he notices. You okay? Did I do something wrong? I continue to hold my stare, curious of what he'll do if I continue, but end up laughing partway through instead. I suck at this. Suck at what? I wanted to see what you'd do if I glared at you, but I'm so bad at pretending to be mad. Wow. I can't believe you were trying to make me feel mean for calling you mean. Of course, you're fun to mess with. I stick my tongue out at Ted, only to be hit by the one thing that could counter it. Boop. Ted pokes my nose with his finger, just like he kept doing back at the arcade. You boop me! Uh-huh. Ted nods. I guess you win, then. Ted lets out another yawn, causing me to yawn as well. On one hand, I could try keeping Ted awake to talk to him some more, but on the other hand, sleep sounds good. Despite how little I've known Ted, I feel comfortable around him. I may not be as close to him as I have been with some of my other friends, but I'm still happy to have him around. Boop. <laughs> I find myself in a large, dark room filled with obstacles outlined in neon lights. I recognize it immediately as a laser tag arena from the arcade. At least this is how I've always imagined it would look like if it would look if it would look if plans not backfired both the times I, attempt, I attempted to go. I'm about to take a look around when my ears perk up at the sound of someone walking up behind me. I turn around. Well now, this is most certainly a delightful change of scenery. Sure enough, it's Kaijoro. A change of pace every now and then is good. Care for a game? I is this real? Is Kaijoro the kitsune who's done, who's done nothing but remind me about Caleb repeatedly this past week asking to play laser tag with me? Can we even do that in a dream? I don't see why not. Anything is possible, after all. I guess so, but there's only two of us, right? Won't that be kind of boring? Who says we can't bend the rules? I notice Kaijoro's smile when he says that, even if it's only slight. There's nothing stopping us from summoning waves of mindless drones to defend ourselves against. I don't think that's how laser tag works. Kaijoro sighs. Like I've said, this is a dream. Your dream. We can do whatever we want. Though I suppose if you prefer, we can ignore this intriguing place your mind's conjured and stand around and chat instead. Hey now, I didn't say I was against playing your version of laser tag, I just didn't expect you to want to do something like this. Think of it as an exercise in teamwork. Exercise in teamwork, huh? Are you sure that's not just an excuse for you to get to play around? Kajiro lets out a quiet laugh, seemingly amused by what I said. Perhaps. For now, I'll set us up. Kajiro walks behind one of the walls, out of sight for a second, only to come only to come back holding what appears to be two laser pistols. Kajiro hands one to me. I, being the person I am, immediately moved moved my gun in small circles while holding my finger down on the trigger, because playing with lasers is fun. I consider aiming it at Kajiro for a second. And so I do. You do realize we're on the same team, right? I know, but I'm having fun. Kajiro sighs, so I decide to stop for now. Thank you. So, how's this gonna work? Like this. With a snap of Kajiro's fingers, music begins to play through the speakers above us, above a strain above as strange shadowy figures begin to spawn around the arena, standing still for a second before slowly making their way towards us. We get the feeling the snap was unnecessary and was just for show. What are those? Think of them like AI. This They're the same concept as any other person you would normally see in a dream. That is to say, their behavior is controlled by your subconscious. But right after he finishes his explanation, one of the creatures jumps at me from behind a wall, catching me by surprise. Ah! Right before it reaches me, a laser hits it, disintegrating it instantly. Ahem. <laughs> I feel embarrassed that I've had to get saved by Kajiro from the only enemy, from only the first enemy in this wave. There's nothing to be scared of. Try using your gun next time. Right. This time, I spot one of the creatures running up from behind Kajiro, so I squeeze my finger on the trigger to fire a laser at it. Unfortunately, there's only one tiny problem. Ah! It won't fire. My scream alerts Kajiro to turn around and shoot at himself, just narrowly getting it in time. Why isn't my gun working? Kajiro grins, his expression looking a bit more cocky and easy to read this time. Perhaps you didn't waste your ammo. Perhaps if you didn't waste your ammo on pointing your laser at me earlier, you'd have enough to deal with these. Ammo? For a laser gun? Seriously? You didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? Ah! Of course you had to make some stupid rule like that. Follow me. I'll take you to a refill point. Before I get much of a chance to react, Kajiro sprints off towards a section of the room that's illuminated by a faint red glow. I try my best to follow, but wind up getting cut off by one of the shadow creatures. A little help here! I scream out, hoping Kajiro will hear, and sure enough, a laser passes through the creature and it disintegrates. Now that the creature is out of the way, I see Kajiro beckoning me to follow. On the side of his pistol, I notice the fuel gauge now displaying as empty. Thankfully, the refill point isn't that far, so we're able to get there, but with relative ease. 
Once there, we find a pair of spinning red glowing canisters that look like ammo packs you'd find in a video game. Upon touching them, they disappear, and cause our, causing our guns to become fully charged again. Having fun yet? Please tell me these things will last for more than three shots this time. Of course. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried that first that we wouldn't get a chance to catch our breath before running to the next one. Oh, we'll still have to do that. These only last for four shots. Wait, what? They, uh, you asked if they give you more than three shots, and they do. As much as I want to strangle you right now, somehow, somehow I feel like this is, well, this is my fault for not expecting this. Kajiro lets out a quick laugh, smiling briefly as he does. It's almost an uncanny sight to see, but till now I've only ever seen him look serious. The moment passes all too quickly, as if he's back to trying to hide the fact that he may have some genuine emotions. It's like he wants to enjoy himself, but doesn't want me to realize that he is. Now that you know how all this works, are you ready to sp speed things up? Uh, speed things up? Kajiro snaps his fingers, like before, and this time I notice the various shadow creatures off in the distance become, begin to move quicker and with more aim. Before, most of them were just kind of there not doing anything, but now I don't think we can afford to stay still for much longer. This way. Kajiro signals me to follow before darting off towards a new refill point he spotted. I don't think it was I don't think it was there before. I rush after him, hoping to avoid getting separated. If only we have four shots each, we need to make them count. Fire! Uh, fire! At your left! Without hesitation, I follow his call out and fire a laser in that direction, taking out not one but two of those creatures at once. We continue on, making our way through several of those dream creatures until we finally reach the next refill point. Surprisingly, we end up making a great team, even if he did wait for me to burn through all my shots before he even fired a single one. I assume he must have done that so he could cover if I missed. Cover me if I missed. Thankfully, my aim was spot on, so there was no need. I'm impressed. You responded to my orders promptly with no training needed. I knew you were worth it. I knew you were the right choice. Huh? Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!